on August the 9th, 1966, a day of great significance to all Singaporeans. And the people are gathered here to pay tribute to the nation. And here they come, the first formation in the flypaths this evening. The National Day Parade, an annual spectacle of sight and sound. But this year's National Day Parade is facing its greatest ever challenge. With over 53,000 COVID-19 cases in Singapore since late January. Restrictions on large gatherings and strict laws on social distancing are radically changing how we celebrate Singapore's 55th birthday. There's been times, I won't deny, where you feel like, is it going to work at all? This year, there will be no mass displays, no grand platforms, and a live audience of just 150. There's no personal touch. So I do feel disappointment. Right now, the concept is stay at home, watch NDP at home. How do you create that interaction where there's no audience? With the country facing a health crisis like never before, what will it take to celebrate this year's National Day Parade? If you drop short for whatever reason, do not land on the road. Alright, the traffic will be ongoing. Nobody is going to stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so quickly move away. You can land on the side. You can crash land onto the tree that is still safer than you land in the middle of the road. At the heart of every NDP are the Singapore Armed Forces elite parachute team, the Red Lions. Since 1989, the Red Lions have been bringing audiences to their feet with death-defying performances. Second Warrant Officer Sim Chi Jin has been made the Red Lions team leader this year. He performed in NDP 2017 and has accumulated 530 jumps in his 14 years with the SAF. Here comes Third Warrant Officer Sim Chi Jin. This year's parade would have seen him and his team descend onto familiar territory, the Marina Bay floating platform. But a change in celebration venues due to pandemic restrictions has thrown a spanner in the works. They are now planning for a mission that calls for an increased scrutiny of weather patterns and far more potential hazards. Okay, today is the first jump there, uh, on station jump. If you are coming from this approach, remember the lamp pole here. Don't turn after the road. Today our objectives are actually to sort out the stack and also the weight difference right? and see what are the difficulties any uh, jumper uh, face and then we'll try and discuss the uh, Chi Jin and his team are planning to do something that no Red Lions team have done before. Parachute into the heartlands and bring the parade directly to the people. Surrounding building, the highest one is this one, 416 feet. This is the drop zone. Okay. We are going to land into the heartland, which is a new terrain. The most concern to us is the wind direction. We are unable to control. Take it easy, okay? Leave your separation. Do not go too close, do not keep too close. Okay, maintain your stack. Okay, only 5,000 feet. 4,000, 4,000, 2,000, 3,000. Check. Nothing above you. 
With high-rise buildings and road traffic close to the drop zones, the Red Lions will have to be extremely precise about where they land. To do this, they'll be jumping from an altitude of 5,000 feet, less than half the height of previous NDPs, in order to reduce wind drift. This year, we need to really recce the site. First of all, if the location is big enough for us to land. Secondly, there mustn't be any obstacle beside the approach. Every jump to me is a new jump. You will never know what will happen. Come 9th of August, two teams of six Red Lions will take to the skies, landing close to Ng Teng Fong General Hospital and Sengkang General Hospital. It's part of their tribute to frontline medical workers who have battled COVID-19 this past year. In a matter of minutes, Chi Jin and his team will depart the sheltered confines of the C-130 Hercules aircraft and descend into unfamiliar territory for the very first time. Will the mission go as he had envisioned? The entire PSC from marching in to out will be 30 minutes sharp. Starting from January, February, it was really a roller coaster ride because there were a lot of questions, right? So, is the National Day parade going to happen? What's the situation going to be like in the next few months? As the chairman of the NDP Executive Committee, Brigadier General Frederick Chu will oversee 21 committees responsible for the logistical, operational, and conceptual demands of the entire event. But unlike other years, BG Chu has the additional pressure of ensuring that the parade operates under strict COVID-19 guidelines. And this begins with finding a suitable venue. We came out with this idea of having an indoor studio show that is a lot more intimate, much smaller in scale, which means lesser infrastructure overheads, lesser complications when you talk about management of areas, fewer people. It's the start of a bold plan to shift the NDP away from the Marina Bay floating platform and into the heartlands. And splitting the show into two segments, a morning parade and an evening show, now allows for a full day of festivities. The number of participants would also be slashed by up to 95%, just 300 instead of the usual five to 6,000. But perhaps the most obvious change is reducing the live audience to just 150 people. This was not a year to say, well, it's difficult, let's see you in 2021, let's see you in 2022, water off our back. We came to the conclusion that it's all the more important to organise something that can rally Singaporeans, to unite Singaporeans. It's going to be a sign to the world that you may not be able to do a grand parade, but we still do it. I've always wanted to direct NDP. It's my childhood dream. I remember back then, NDP was in the morning. And when I watched it, I, I felt that sense of pride. And I was like, oh, one day I'll be the first kampong boy to direct NDP. Award-winning film director Royston Tan was approached by the Exco last year. And he drew up plans for a Marina Bay spectacular. The previous concept, usually we wanted to celebrate the rich diversity of Singapore. So these are six of the giant big props that will be coming in in the very, very first act. And this is one of the most amazing uh, theatrics that we have here. We have maybe like a thousand dancers and then their costumes will have mega transformation. 
Well, there will be explosion and explosive and pyrotechnics everywhere. The screen actually will move. Uh, we have trap doors where fires will be coming out. But when the pandemic hit Singapore, Royston's creative master plan went up in smoke. This is definitely not possible in an indoor setting because of the safety regulations. This is meant for really an outdoor thing. Indoor, it, it just looks strange. He was given only two weeks to scale down his vision. So he did it the one way he knew best. As a filmmaker who always listen or get inspiration from coffee shop, I say, let's take two days off and go down to the people and listen to their sentiments and how do they feel. The uncle said, you don't want to give me that kind of feeling of after that two days, we presented to the army and said that we are going to change the entire concept. Hello. Uh, before you enter, can you guys sure. help to scan both the QR codes? Sure. Yeah. Okay, temperature is 36.6. Please maintain your open distancing. 36.6. Thank you. So you're very fast? Thank you. Yeah, sure. You have to hand sanitizer. Thank you. Welcome to the theatre. Hello. Today is actually our first camera rehearsal with the dancers. This is the before the film when Lee gets in. We are customising this for a broadcast experience to maybe five to six million people. So we are compensating with lightings, camera angles to bring out the best visual audio experience. What technical issues are we having now? We had some new cues. So for P11 during the reprise section, we are going to actually have kinetic balls fly in. So mm. that's something that we will see later for the rehearsal and see how the look comes together. Okay, we're going okay. to try that out later. The new vision for this evening show is pocket size, bite size performance that's not more than two and a half minutes. And you have young singers as well as veteran singers coming on board to write special songs, to echo the sentiments of fellow Singaporeans right now. They are fierce, their hope during this circuit breaker period, how we have all emerged stronger. And we're going to string it together in a very seamless way between film as well as music. In the past, it was always a big mess display. So this round, I think, you know, we have to switch our mind. How do we convey the emotion in a very personal and intimate way? I think one of the biggest challenge that we are facing, what looks very good on paper, and suddenly when you bring it down, it becomes very small. How do we bring this to a climatic high? With only three weeks to go before the big day, will Royston be able to deliver his new vision? Bawang Air Base. Crew from the Republic of Singapore Air Force are preparing for one of the most iconic moments of the NDP, the state flag fly-past. It's a tradition that's now in its 50th year. This year, there'll be two flags, each measuring 30 by 20 metres, and it will take 25 men up to two hours for the critical task of packing it correctly for deployment. Each flag will be carried by a Chinook helicopter and escorted by two Apache helicopters. For the first time, the flag will travel across the western and eastern ends of the island so that Singaporeans can watch the fly past from the safety of their homes. It's a flight path filled with hazards, including high-rise buildings, construction cranes and unmanned drones. To mitigate this risk, the helicopters will be flying 200 feet higher than in previous years. But a watchful eye is still needed to alert the crew. Flight engineer Sukdesh Singh is the man for the job. 
This year, after flying past Show Centre, we actually bring the flag through the heartlands of Singapore. And flying through the heartlands is not something that we always do in close formation. All right, so during the state flag fly pass, I'll be stationed in the right forward cabin door. I'll be looking out to the Apache helicopters because we'll be in very close formation. At the same time, I'll ensure that wherever we are flying above the obstacles, we have sufficient clearance. If I was to spot any drones or any large birds, I could also let the pilots know up front to avoid to ensure that we have a safe flight back home. But for Sukdesh, Ensuring a successful state flag fly past isn't the only thing on his mind. Hey, Dad, okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, how are you? His father, Satpal Singh, was a nurse. But he came out of retirement during the circuit breaker just to work on the front line at Koo Teck Puat Hospital. Oh, you start at 8, so you finish at 8 uh, in the morning. You wear the full gown PPE, right? Yes, we wear the full gown, the yellow gown. When my dad actually told me that he was in close contact with the COVID-19 patients, I was like, oh my God, seriously? But he's very passionate about his work and uh, he knows that he needs to come forward and make Singapore safe. With Sukdesh and his dad both holding critical jobs, they're taking measures to protect everyone in the family. One of these uh, things that we have in place is a decontamination area, which is placed outside our house. What we have done as a family is that we have deconflicted our work timings. So there's definitely no cross-contamination between the two of us, because we do know that it's important that we carry out our duty safely. as a whole for your own route. Okay, this is your first time, the sequence of salute. Okay, we'll give you the command, give you the timing. We'll do before we proceed for the practice round. Since the start of the pandemic, SEDF paramedic Sergeant Noor Faradilla has been on call to transport COVID-19 patients to hospitals across Singapore. Can you check the backboard? Okay, Any blood stain? No blood stain. Today, She's taking a break from those duties to live out a childhood dream. Being part of the NDP mobile column. Nearly 350 personnel from the military and the home team are gathering at Tuas South for one of the final rehearsals. The route that we are going through is in the north. Uh, so the hospital that we are passing through is Kutikpot Hospital. Being a frontliner myself, I felt happy to pass by specific hospitals during the mobile column. In a way, like we are showing them respect that throughout the hard times, we are still there for you as one nation. This year's mobile column will involve 66 military and home team assets deployed in five routes spread across Singapore. Each route will take the mobile column into the heartlands. It will pass key locations in the fight against COVID-19, like hospitals and the Singapore Expo. It's part of a grand plan to bring the NDP crowd favourite closer to Singaporeans by allowing them to see the action from their homes and cheer for those who fought tirelessly this past year. Close to 100 frontline and essential workers, like Faradilla, will be aboard the vehicles. To keep the convoy in formation, each vehicle must maintain a strict 50 metre distance from each other. It's a skill that Faradilla has to master as the vehicle commander. We yeah, are actually looking through lampposts for as our marking points. This is three lampposts. So you just go straight, just go first, then they will guide you to slow down. Faradilla has dedicated 40 hours of training and rehearsal time, while also juggling a demanding day job. Hey, 
But it's the time spent apart from her one-year-old daughter, Anzalna, that has affected her the most. So now that my daughter is starting to show emotions and starting to learn how to walk, it makes me feel excited to play with her. Can I, can I, can I come to mommy? Wait, 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 okay? Mommy shower first, okay? But at the same time, I understand that sacrifices need to be made. I also want to share this experience with my daughter in the future and tell her that despite the hard work, despite the toughest situation that we have faced, we can still move on with life <laughs> and we need to look ahead. The National Day Parade typically involves over 5,000 parade participants. But this year, the numbers have been restricted to 300. <laughs> Kelly Ko is PA's resident dance expert. With over 10 years of experience as a freelance dancer, She's had a hand in crafting the NDP performances these past five years. This year, instead of a live dance performance, the People's Association has commissioned two dance videos for social media, stitched together using individual clips from their members. Today, Kelly and her team are recording the final dance moves as a reference for their fellow PA members. They will mimic Kelly's dance moves, record themselves dancing, and submit the clip to be part of the final video. This song we are using is called Yam Sing. In Yam Sing is like applaud and cheers. So we're going to look on the positive side that at the end of the day, we will walk towards a happy and progress Singapore. <laughs> Compared to watching the mass display on the ground, the feel is so different. So I do feel that it's a kind of disappointment. But for the nation, we will just want to contribute. Like many Singaporeans this year, Kelly's life has been turned upside down by the pandemic. As a freelance dance teacher, her work engagements have dropped sharply over the past four months and her income has plunged by 95%. Dance art is still a non-essential item in Singapore, so I do feel the insecurity. To date, she has only one freelance gig in her calendar an online dance class for students with special needs. I see Pushna doing this. Ah, oh, she's getting excited. Very nice, very good. Right? Yeah, I see Yong Hao also. Okay, but Yong Hao, you don't, you don't shake too much. Huh? Later you feel giddy. Huh? Later all your bihun come out. Singapore's community of freelance creatives has been one of the worst affected groups in this crisis. By mid-July, more than 8,000 of their projects have been cancelled, totaling over $30 million in lost income. With the threat of more waves of infection to come, Kelly has decided to initiate a major career change after nearly 14 years as a dance teacher. It was a difficult decision because I have to prepare for a big pay cut and at the same time, I have to really reskill myself from zero. It has been tough going back to school because I have not been taking courses for a long, long time. And at the same time, I have to coordinate the passion arts and DP videos. So I guess this year is really a different approach that I have to adapt to it as well. With new realities to adapt to, will Kelly overcome her career challenges and still deliver a memorable dance performance for National Day?
With the COVID-19 pandemic still raging, some Singaporeans are questioning the need for this year's celebration. And a petition requesting an opt-out option for NDP fund packs to better use our resources has garnered over 100,000 signatures. Former civil servant Judith De Silva has closely followed these debates. She's a lifelong supporter of the NDP and believes the event and all its traditions should be preserved, particularly during these tougher times. The first time I took part in NDP was uh, 1966. I think that was the first NDP. Then came uniformed youth contingents, including Army, Sea, Air Training and Police Cadets. I was part of the police cadet contingent carrying flags. And in those days, I really didn't think much about it. I was just doing, part, doing this as part of my ECA. So it's only like now, after many years in the exco, you start thinking about what the NTP means to Singaporeans. It's not just a celebration because we gained independence. It's much, much more than that. Judith has served on the NDP Executive Committee for the last 10 years, okay. formulating and sharpening the parade's themes, messaging and narrative. A celebration together from our homes. Doesn't sound very nice as well, but I think it's getting there. <laughs> yep. I think that celebrate is fine. Really? But why do you want to say that in, in, in a poster that is giving information on what's going to, be, what's going to happen on that day? It's a time yes, schedule. I think you still need that. You don't want it to be emotionless. Huh? Ah. You don't want it to be a, a, like a checklist or yeah, a, yeah. Uh, agree, a agree. menu. Agree. This year, Judith is using her editorial expertise to give audiences a sneak peek into what's in store and why they should tune in on the big day. It was of recession in 85, that was the first time we were hit. And then there was the SARS. And now, a salute to the spirit of our selfless healthcare workers in overcoming the SARS challenge. But throughout all these years, even though times were bad and budgets were constrained, we still had an NDP, maybe on a smaller scale, uh, no fireworks, or not, but we made it a point to continue having NDP. In the past, the symbol was in the venue. I remember mean, there's a padang on the floating platform and people went there. Now, it is as if this symbol, this NDP, is taken out to the heartlands. It's going out to the people and telling them, hey, Singaporeans, thank you so much for your courage. Thank you for your sacrifices. So that when all this is over, there will still be a Singapore. So NDP, to me, is a symbol a symbol of our strength, a symbol of our can-do spirit, a symbol of our resilience coming together as one and facing the challenges we have and overcoming them. NDP 2020 is dedicated to everyday Singaporeans who've shown resilience and courage in the fight against COVID-19. But in the spotlight are the nation's medical frontliners. What I see now is some earwax in both your ear canals. So I need to have a closer look at your eardrums, OK? All right. Over 3,000 current and former healthcare professionals answered calls from the Ministry of Health for volunteers when the pandemic took a turn for the worse in April. Dr Celeste Chua was one of them. An ear, nose and throat specialist at Sengkang General Hospital, Dr Chua and her team volunteered to conduct swab tests at the neighbouring S11 workers' dormitory. 
It was then Singapore's biggest COVID-19 cluster. A lot of the migrant workers that are living there actually contributed to the building of the hospital. So um, I would say that there was a kind of an emotional tie. These migrant workers left their homes, their families, to come to a foreign land to help us to build a structure so that we ourselves are able to care for and contribute to our own community. A lot of us felt that um, it was a good opportunity for us to pay back for the sacrifices that they had actually um, uh, gone through. Lah. Because of the numbers that we had to see, we had to work at a certain pace, but at the same time, we had to maintain safety as well as um, adhere to the infection control uh, measures. Everyone has to be very uh, mentally engaged in what they are doing. So at the end of the day, when you combine the mental um, alertness as well as the physical fatigue, you can actually be quite drained. I think that a lot of Singaporeans have made sacrifices in their own ways. Everyone has tried to adjust and do something to make the situation better. And I think that everyone actually deserves that recognition. One of the most touching things that I've seen was the stories of the frontline workers, of their dedication. Sometimes we, we forgot that they are human too. They, they have families. There are people who talk about how after she gave birth and then she, she went to work in the front line and she had not seen her baby. And fathers who were also working in the front line and how they cannot go back home. And that to me was very moving. And these are important stories that we need to see for fellow Singaporeans in this very difficult time. There hasn't been one year that we don't have NDP and more so that it's even more important this year. So, which is the segment later we are going to do? Uh, later we are doing the finale. Okay. So you finally, uh, you know, uh, later there's going to be this chunk of people that's just going to move from there to there and then also there's a new added barrel to uh, Yes. So which is going to be every segment. It's three weeks to National Day. And at the Star Performing Arts Centre, creative director Royston Tan is racing to pull the evening show together. He's had to scale back his vision for the Marina Bay extravaganza. The new lineup is now made up of smaller group performances and a montage of video interviews featuring Singaporeans from all walks of life. Tell me, which is the new development that you have done so far for this week? I've added in more photos. Spoken to ex co chairman, he does agree that maybe we don't need all this too many stuff. As long as at least right, the basic blocking by tonight, it will be ready, ready lah. Okay. Yeah. I look at my white hair. I used don't have white hair kind of person. Look, <laughs> yeah. Directing NDP is like being in a reality show, and I really meant it because every day you have a new situation that happens. There's a lot of people who are joining us. We feel very touched uh, with these people, regardless of race and religion. Going all, all these videos are actually efforts from many, many days doing research. It's divided into a few parts. Firstly, about the inconvenience of uh, fellow Singaporeans during this circuit breaker and how do they deal with it. And the second part is talking about how we pay tribute to the essential workers and the frontline worker. You will hear about their fears, their struggle. And the final part of the segment, how uh, the community come in to bridge the gap within the community by helping one another. Of course, there's a lot of challenge because filming is very different. Uh, we have to ensure safety distancing uh, and uh, limit the people. Uh, timing schedule-wise was also very difficult. But everybody is just pushing themselves for the best. And that is the kind of spirit that we want to celebrate. You see resilience everywhere. And it's very heartening. Over at Tuas, 66 vehicles from the SAF and home team are about to begin a full-scale rehearsal. It's 
is an emotional moment for SCDF paramedic Sergeant Faradilla. She has dreamt of taking part in the parade as a uniformed officer since she was a child. But today, those feelings are bittersweet. My father, he, he actually collapsed in the hospital bed sometime in April um, during the circuit breaker period. But his death is not unexpected. He is warded due to his heart disease. It's already been long term. After this brief ride, the north and southeast, you'll go down and prep your vehicle. Okay, because... It would mean the world to me, my father, to see me participating in NDP this year. And also to represent my organisation. I have learned that with all the challenges that I've faced, I didn't do it all by myself. I have my family, friends and also my colleagues especially who have been with me throughout the hard times. They have been supporting me emotionally and physically. Lining each year's National Day Parade is the performance of its theme song, a duty that's been entrusted to many of Singapore's musical luminaries, including Kit Chan, JJ Lin, and Stephanie Sun. Because of who you are, I can be everything I am. This year, Singer-songwriter Nathan Hatono will be joining their ranks with the song Everything I Am. Here's to my home, to my homeland. Like many of this year's NDP segments, the theme song had to be relooked to fit the mood and sentiment of the country. When the song was written, it was actually written before COVID-19 popped up. And by chance, the lyrics happened to coincide beautifully with the message of gratitude that this year's NDP wanted to put out there. But what I could add to it, I guess, was like some vocal production, like helping out with like the, the vocal arrangements, figuring out how to make this song sound the way it feels. Intimate, warm, loving, as opposed to like a big explosion of a song. There's definitely pressure there because it is uh, on such a big scale and it's for a much wider audience. And I'm not just recording my own song, it's not just for my audience. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel that weight of being the person that sang the NDP theme song. Because I think people have a, a certain like expectation of it's home or nothing else. <laughs> but for Nathan, the challenge of singing this year's NDP theme song would not stop there he would soon face the intense scrutiny of the online community. Singer-songwriter Nathan Hatono has been chosen to headline this year's National Day theme song. Here's to my people, I can want nothing more. It's a mammoth undertaking that has exposed him to both public praise and scrutiny. Soon after the song was released online, comments questioning his nationality surfaced. But Nathan is a first-generation Singaporean born to Indonesian parents. In response to all of that, I thought it was funny to take some screenshots of the comments that I saw on social media and put them up on my own in social media. I found the conversation around it genuinely interesting, especially coming from my perspective, because like I was literally born and raised here. <laughs> um, and I've never really put to question my own nationality. It did make me um, think, what qualifies somebody to call a place home? Because to me, I've always thought that the qualifier should be pretty simple. 
somewhere where you identify with, somewhere where you have chosen to really plant your roots. And I think this year's National Day Parade has encapsulated a lot of those stories. There's really so much bravery, so much kindness, so much selflessness that maybe was hiding behind closed doors before. But because of what our country has been put through over the last six months, it is out in the open right now. And for people to hear it, understand it, learn from it, and move forward together with it. thousand feet in the skies above Jurong East, the Red Lions are preparing to take a leap into unfamiliar terrain. For the first time in the parade's history, they'll be parachuting into the heartlands of Singapore, onto a field near Ng Teng Fong General Hospital in Jurong East. But it's a display that requires them to navigate around high-rise buildings, busy roads and other hazardous obstacles. Can the Red Lions prevail? And success! With their feet back on solid ground, all six Red Lions have nailed their first jump at the Jurong East drop zone. Today's jump is great because uh, all objectives are met and every jumpers are safe. The rehearsal display is only a success if everyone reach camp and go home. Once we land right, we will Based on Ting Fong General Hospital, I will salute them for their effort. Because on this year, right, we want to really pay tribute to the frontline fighter. I feel very proud and quite touched in the sense that we are doing this to make sure that they are being recognized. Singapore's 55th birthday is just days away, and the rehearsals are almost over. After NDP, I will resume back to make my commercials as well as complete my feature film. So I think in the future, when I direct the aesthetic, the sensibility will be very different because I've learned a lot from how do you actually stage a big show. Well, without shadow of a doubt, I will want to come back to direct NDP again because I want to do the big NDP that everybody have always enjoyed. For People's Association choreographer Kelly Cole, the past few weeks have been an exhausting juggling act between NDP duties and her coursework and exams. But Kelly's determined to rise to the occasion. All my projects are being seized indefinite. But instead of just sitting down there, I actually self-initiated to pick up several courses that I've upgraded myself. National Day, to me, is about celebrating our existence and still having this country to call home and a shelter over our heads and looking at Singaporeans like you, everybody else, and say, hey, we've got each other. As a small boy, when I used to see the state flag fly past from my grandfather's window, now to do this and give this back during a pandemic situation, 
It's a great feeling for me. It's a very humbling experience for me. And I think I'm just going to be a lot stronger after this because I really see everyone is just pressing on, wanting to give the best show to fellow Singaporeans in this very difficult time. And we are all not giving up.